week Chaplin stars as the lone prospector in the 1925 film The Gold Rush, quintessential comedy with the little man at eight. And get in early to avoid the rush for the commemorative booklet that goes with this season of films. Just send us a cheque or postal order for £2, payable to Channel 4 to this address. Charlie Chaplin, P.O. Box 4000, London W36XJ, Glasgow G12 9JQ, or Belfast BT2 7FE. Now on four, we join ITN for a news report from Nicholas Owen. Good evening. 93 football fans are dead after Britain's worst sporting disaster. They were crushed when hundreds of supporters flooded into Sheffield's Hillsborough Stadium for the FA Cup semi-final between Liverpool and Nottingham Forest. There are two emergency phone numbers, 0742 570 and 051-708-7277. Tonight, the Chief Constable of South Yorkshire said a senior police officer ordered a double gate at the back of the stand to be opened because of the crush outside. Gabby Rado reports. The game had only just started when the first casualties began to arrive onto the pitch, and for a while, play carried on because no one realised the horror of what was happening in the terraces. Behind the Liverpool goal, an irresistible forward movement of people met an immovable object, the perimeter fence, and human beings started to be crushed to death. It was an appalling predicament for the mainly young fans who could see safety within inches but were prevent prevented from reaching it by thin wire mesh. The lucky ones climbed over or were able to make their way to the next enclosure where there was less pressure from behind. The Hillsborough turf became a giant makeshift first aid enclosure. The death toll rose inexorably through the afternoon. What happened was that the opening of a gate behind the Lepping Lane grandstand allowed far too many people in from the street. Those inside were first pushed alongside, then in front of the grandstand by the weight of those behind. What resulted was a crush behind the goal mouth. Those trapped had nowhere to escape to. The fans themselves immediately blamed the entry procedures. Just open they opened the gates. gates. Right, never even, even checked it. Even never even checked it. Never even took the stub. Just opened the gates. They opened the gates and they just let us walk in. Didn't even take it off us. That says to be taken in. My mate was supposed to bring his little son here today. I got his ticket. If he'd been brought to me today, he'd been just glad to get him out alive. And he only comes to watch a football match. There were kids then, the abandoned possessions of the dead and the survivors had to be removed and the investigation had to begin. The Queen has sent a message of sympathy to the families involved and the Prime Minister has called for an urgent report. Bill Dunlop reports on the questions now to be answered. South Yorkshire Police had 800 men at this afternoon's game. Tonight, the Chief Constable Peter Wright faced persistent questioning over who had opened the Leppings Lane gate and why. The gate was opened at police direction. I am not aware of any connection between the opening of the gate and the surge on the terrace. Why was the gate opened? Because there was danger to life outside with, with crushing. Is that outside the turnstiles? Outside the turnstiles, outside the turnstiles at Lepping Lane. The Chief Constable denied that by opening the gate, the police had caused a surge into an already full stand. There was room for them. Was there any reason to ask you that now? I don't know what the capacity is, but as I understand it, there were at least 2,000 places within that stand at the time that the incident occurred. And there was no significance in claims that some fans had apparently got into the ground with unchecked tickets. Well, the purpose of opening the gate was to save their life and to save the crush on the people outside the turnstile. It wouldn't have followed that they would have been able to tear the tickets at the same time. 
Meanwhile, the local hospitals which received the dead and injured were described as inundated, though staff were praised for the speed at which they mobilised. This doctor has been on duty at Sheffield's Northern General Hospital. The predominant injury is that of suffocation, patients not being able to breathe and not enough oxygen getting to the brain um, with the damage that that does. And these, these are the patients mainly that have required ventilation on the intensive care unit. Does that mean they'll end up with brain damage? That is far too early to say. Tonight, anxious relatives waited at Liverpool's Lime Street station as fans began to arrive home, stunned by the fact that once again a major occasion involving their club had turned to tragedy. To recap on this worst disaster in British sporting history, 93 fans were crushed to death at the FA Cup semi-final between Liverpool and Nottingham Forest. There's a special programme on the Hillsborough disaster on ITV at 11.30 tonight. ITN will be on the air tomorrow on Channel 4 at 7.30 in the morning with a special programme. From Channel 4 News for now, goodbye. The next tonight's film on 4 International is set in post-war Poland as a young boy rediscovers his mother and is introduced to a world full of change. Jetsi starts his journey on the long road home. Any minute now he's going to speak Hungarian. All financial people speak Hungarian to me. I thought a unit trust was a surgical support. And for a pension was a small hotel in France. Right. Do you know the name Friends Provident? Ooh, Friends Provident, they're great. Well, we prefer to say, while future performance can't be guaranteed, Friends Provident policyholders have enjoyed impressive long-term benefits. You see, fluent Hungarian. Well, let's put it another way. Chinese? They make money grow. English? Friends Provident, we've grown big by being recommended. There's a place that's just enjoyed its most successful year ever. Do you know what it's called? A place where jobs are created at a rate of eight every day. Do you know what it's called? A place where 77 distribution companies know the value of its excellent communications. Do you know what it's called? Cumberland Cumberland Old, a new generation. This year, the world's number one marathon has a number one sponsor. Keep on running. ADT is the world's number one in electronic security protection. ADT is also the world's number one vehicle auction group. ADT, the number one sponsor for the number one marathon. As you might expect, Virgin Atlantic have a rather different view of corporate man from many of their older competitors, which is why their business class is not your business as usual class. They give you two tickets for a start. The economy one's free. The in-flight service is even more of a departure with the highest ratio of cabin staff per passenger. And they've gone and fitted sleeper seats you can sleep in. And look at this, your own personal Sony video thingy. Choose the movie you want from over a hundred titles, then see if your chums can guess which one it was. Three independent surveys have voted Virgin the best business carrier across the Atlantic. Even the limo's free. Virgin Atlantic voted the business person's favourite airline. Now, Film on 4 International presents a story of family reunion and childhood hope, are both too fragile to survive the post-war world.
ist nicht mehr weit. Na, da bist du denn. Ich bin dort vor Hunger. Ich habe